Reynolds back in a hurry. Reynolds to the hole. Yeah, we're trying to get free shoot scores. To keep the Grand Barry on target. Lundy to the house. Touchdown, Virginia. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery, where all profits benefit Virginia's public schools grades K-12. through Buy clean, safe, reliable propane. Propane, exceptional energy. And brought to you in part by the Virginia Athletics Foundation, dedicated to providing scholarship, operational, and facility support for the Virginia Athletics Program. On this edition of Cavalier Sports Weekly, presented by the Virginia Lottery. I can do more stuff than just, you know, take three steps and kick a ball through some hole. It's an overwhelming environment, you know, you're not prepared. Syracuse are a great team. They got, uh, they got some big linemen. It's good! Then he ducks underneath the swing, and then he brings an uppercut. Welcome to Cavalier Sports Weekly. I'm Kelly Hammond, midfielder on the women's soccer team. We've got a great show for you today with a preview of the upcoming Syracuse game and a behind-the-scenes look of the making of Cadman. But first, here's your play of the week. The play of the week is brought to you by SunTrust Mortgage. We make the American dream come true every day. Nice job, Emily! Emily's just one of those athletes that uh, coaches dream that, uh, you know, we, we don't have to tell her too much. We just get her to the starting line, and, uh, and she knows how to do the rest. So she's just a fierce competitor, and... Uh, uh, you know, and it shows when she gets out there on the course. She uh, had an outstanding freshman year last year and uh, really surprised us. Uh, kind of each meet last year, she surprised us more and more. And uh, I knew she did a great job this summer. I knew she was in better shape than she was last year. And so, you know, I was pleased to see her out there front, uh, out there front all by herself, uh, running tough. I just think all around my fitness is just at a much higher level. I was really pleased with this opening, how I was able to actually win this year. So that was in a much stronger time. And we'll be right back with more highlights on Cavalier Sports Weekly. Welcome back to the show. The football team returns to action this Saturday as they travel to Syracuse. Let's take a look at how the Hoos match up against the Orange. Next week, Virginia at Syracuse. The Cavaliers travel to Syracuse next Saturday to take on the Orange in the Carrier Dome. Syracuse is under the guidance of first-year head coach Greg Robinson, who has installed a West Coast offense that emphasizes the short pass. The Orange offense struggled in the first game as junior quarterback Perry Patterson adjusted to the new system. Against Big East rival West Virginia, the Syracuse offense gained just 114 yards and was 0 for 11 on third down conversion. However, Cavalier players are expecting to see a much improved team on Saturday. I'm sure they're doing the same thing as us. There's a lot of things in our first game that, that we saw we needed to improve on. I'm sure we're the same with them. So by the time we see them, they're going to be more improved. And, uh, and we need to be just as improved or more improved. So that's why this off week is real important for us. The Virginia defense will still have its hands full with senior tailback Damian Rhodes. Rhodes is emerging as the focal point of the Syracuse offense and will be looking to have a big game against the Wahoos. The UVA defensive backfield will also need to keep their eyes on tight end Ryan Kowalewski, who's expected to be a big part of the Orange short passing attack. We're just going to go in there with our same attitude and just try to get up as best as we can in this off, off week and uh, just be as prepared as we can. Unfortunately for Marcus Higgins and the Virginia offense, the Syracuse defense looked solid in game one. They gave up just 339 yards of total offense against West Virginia and allowed the Mountaineers to go just one for 13 on third down conversions. Defensive end James Weiss, the preseason Big East Defensive Player of the Year, leads a formidable defensive line that the Cavaliers will need to control in order to put points on the board. Syracuse are a great team. They got, uh, they got some big linemen, some big defensive linemen. The Orange will be aided by a raucous crowd in the Carrier Dome, which can be rather inhospitable to visiting teams. And they're right on top of you. It's hot in there. It's loud. And it's just it's an overwhelming environment, you know, if you're not prepared. It's a great place to, uh, 
to play. They got uh, the field turf now in there, and uh, it's going to be interesting. Saturday's game kicks off at noon and will be televised by either ESPN or ESPN2. Games against in-state rival Virginia Tech are always important, but this year they will also count in a new rivalry series, the Commonwealth Challenge. Here's more on this exciting series. The Commonwealth Challenge is presented by Adelphia. On August 31st, University of Virginia Athletics Director Craig Littlepage, in conjunction with Virginia Tech AD Jim Weaver, announced the Who's and the Hokies will compete in the Commonwealth Challenge. The Commonwealth Challenge presented by Adelphia Communications is a comprehensive competition involving the 21 common sports between the two institutions. It even expands the relationship beyond what it is that we will do with the ACC and it will give even greater significance to the competition that are the sports that have traditionally competed, football, basketball, soccer, etc. But it will give greater credibility and exposure to our Olympic sports programs overall. The ability for the student athletes and coaches in these programs to demonstrate the quality of their respective sports, I think, does uh, just tremendous things for our respective institutions. Virginia and Virginia Tech will compete in 24 sporting events over the course of the 2005 2006 athletic season. One point will be awarded to the winner of each competition, except in football, volleyball, and track and field. The football game will be worth two points, and each volleyball match and track and field meet will be worth one half point. The UVA Athletics Department staff is looking forward to this new challenge. What I saw in the room and what I heard afterwards were comments by coaches, one sport to another, with how much they were now going to look forward to seeing the volleyball game against Virginia Tech because it counted for something in our department overall. So I think that it further links each and every one of the programs in our department, which I think is a great byproduct of this relationship. 11 and a half points will be needed to win the Commonwealth Challenge Trophy. The award will be presented at the football game the following season. Little Page knows of a perfect spot for the trophy to reside next fall. I think that would look awfully good in the John Paul Jones Arena, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Another steal, Cook inside, key in the block. The first competition of the Commonwealth Challenge will be on October 4th when the Virginia volleyball team hosts the Virginia Tech Hokies at Memorial Gym in Charlottesville. For complete Cavalier sports coverage, watch VirginiaSportsTV.com. I watch VirginiaSportsTV.com. When Bart's surfing the web, he goes to www.VirginiaSportsTV.com. If you love Cavalier football, then check out VirginiaSportsTV.com so you can get a better look at me and some of my teammates. For exclusive all-access video of Virginia football, visit virginiasports.com and look for the links to virginiasportstv.com. Coming up next. I can do more stuff than just, you know, take three steps and kick a ball through some poles. Before he became one of Virginia's most prolific place kickers, senior Connor Hughes was a star on the soccer field. UVA fans are glad he traded the goalposts for the uprights. Connor Hughes is your Student Athlete of the Week. The Student Athlete of the Week is presented by the Virginia Lottery. This past year alone, the Virginia Lottery contributed a record $408 million to public schools throughout the Commonwealth. It's good. Perfect. Good. Good. It's good. And Connor delivers for the tie right now. Snap back. Ball down. The kick is up. It is long enough. It is it, is it was amazing. Like the guys were, were like, "Come on, man! You know we're gonna we're gonna get you in the range." And and uh, you know I was fortunate enough to get to you know tie the game up with a long one. Uh, and I don't think a lot of people were really expecting me to make it. So that was exciting. It was really cool. And and uh, I was really encouraged by the rest of the older guys that were getting behind me for it. I remember just having the utmost confidence in them. 
and uh, he showed it. I mean, the flying colors, he, he was the man. But this guy has plenty of leg. I remember when I was coming here, I wasn't just a kicker in high school. I played soccer, and then my senior year, I played quarterback with the team. So um, when I was coming in, I didn't, I didn't feel just like a kicker, you know, and, and I was really getting frustrated a lot because uh, because I couldn't do anything but kick during practice and so everybody just thought I was a kicker and I was like, man, you know, I feel like I'm an athlete but none of these guys know, you know, if I can do anything but kick. It wasn't until the first off season when I really got to work out with the rest of the guys, you know, that I started to feel athletic again, you know, and, and uh, some of the other guys noticed that, you know, I'm, I can do more stuff than just, you know, take three steps and kick a ball through some poles. Hunter's different from most kickers. He's, he's not really a kicker. I mean, he's faster and you know more athletic than than any other kicker I've, I've seen. Just in the off season when uh, you know there's there's certain things that you know we got to run, blah blah, and you know the kicker doesn't. When is he really going to have to need all of that? But you know Connor's in there working harder and just as hard as us, so um, he earns all of our respect by doing that. Phillips to hold. Snap is perfect. Ball down. The kick is up. It is long enough, and he misses left. So Connor Hughes missed left, and it looked like he got a pretty good hold, but he pulled it just a little bit. Still not used to like actually like missing or like failing at a kick. So you know when I did like last year was a big growth year for me because I had to learn how to handle that stuff. And I feel like now you know I can get over the missed kicks a lot better. Um, while still like being confident and believing that you know the next hit's going you know right down the middle. It probably got him down a little bit, just because that's the way he is. You know he's a hard worker and he's dedicated. Um, but he just kept working hard and didn't let him get it down too much. And uh, you know it's paying off now. I, I see he's, he's gotten a lot better in the off season. And, uh, you know he won't flinch. Yeah, you know we uh, the operation wasn't the same. You know we had. Child, Ryan Childress and Matt Schaub, my freshman and sophomore year, so I'd really gotten used to those guys. And then uh, the guys last year, Zach Yarbrough and John Phillips, they did great, but it was just a whole different uh, timing, different dynamics to it. I think some of it had to do with the new kicking operation. I think him and Matt Schaub had a, a real good thing going with their, uh, and Childress, with their snapping, kicking operation. And, um, you know, with new players, you know, you gotta, you gotta get into a new rhythm. The snapping and the holding just, you know, we work on it so much that it starts to become just part of the kick, like that's the start of it. And you can count on, with those two guys, I got Tyrus Gardner and John Phillips this year, they're doing a great job, you know, just amazing. And now when I get up, I can be confident the ball's going to be right there every time I need it. And it feels a lot like it did my sophomore year with the timing and the step. Hughes looks at John and says, I'm ready. Snap back, ball down. A kick is up. It is long enough and it is good. Practice is, I've told a ton of people, it's just so, like, boring for me, really. I mean, I can only kick so much each day, you know, the leg gets tired and strained, you know, whatever may happen. But, you know, I look over and guys are like, oh, man, you're so lucky. Like, you don't have to run during practice. You don't have to hit during practice. I'm like, man, if y'all sat in my place for one day, y'all would be wishing you could get back in your position, you know. You know, when we have a hard practice, I go to see if they have any sweat on their, on their brow or anything like that. Uh, just give them a hard time. I wasn't used to just sitting around watching, you know, my whole life. I, when I was growing up, I was trying to get in the middle of everything, but when I got here and I just stood on the sideline, it was a big change for me, a real big change. Compared to most kickers, um, you know, and that whole group, you know, they're, they're working, they're working, you know, somewhat on, on the side, you know, they, they got their little things. They're not just sitting there, you know, twiddling their thumbs, you know, with, with their situation, that they're, they're putting in some work, you know and trying to get better each day. For seven seasons, Cavman has delayed spectators with his epic battles with opposing mascots and his ride to Scott Stadium. This year, the creators of Cavman have used cutting-edge technology to make our beloved mascot even more realistic. Cavman is our focus on this week's Who's Heating Up. Who's Heating Up is brought to you by Propane Exceptional Energy. What we're doing is um, we 
have uh, cameras that emit ultraviolet light. Uh, these reflective markers uh, reflect ultraviolet light, and so what the cameras are actually seeing is only the points where these little balls are on the various joints of the body. We capture that data and then apply that to the actual bone structure of Cabman so that when Marcus lifts his arm up, that elbow marker rises up in the air and then that same data will be transferred to Cabman and then his arm would rise up in the air. So it's simple in, in concept but it's fairly complicated in the way it actually works because you have to sync all your cameras together and they have to be all calibrated at the same space and individually they're each taking a two-dimensional picture but then that has to get put together into a three-dimensional marker set that actually gets applied to the character so it ends up being a, a fairly involved process um, but the uh, the suit's good and I think Marcus wants to get one for himself because he likes it so much. <laughs> Yeah, the suits come in all different sizes, but this is the same suit, and the same, actually the same company that makes this suit would be the one making it for uh, Gollum, for Lord of the Rings, or one of the different types of uh, you know, various video games, you know, EA Sports and all that. They dress them up in this exact suit, and that's how they do it. It's all optical motion capture. After we've captured the data uh, into the computer, we get a 3D representation of that data. The first thing that I do is um, I'll put sort of a generic character on it. We call them, this is an actor versus being a character. Cabin would be a character, this is just a generic actor. After you've smoothed out the data uh, and, and you can see it working on your timeline uh, in real time, after it's all fixed, uh, then it's just a matter of loading in Cabman uh, into here and I can go ahead and merge him in. Uh, I'll merge in the Cabman. So the next step then is just to tell the computer to drive Cabman from the marker data while the movement of the characters controlled through internal bone structures that we've placed in them. The facial expressions are actually more as if someone just sort of grabbed part of the face and twisted it or moved it. So it's controlled a little bit differently. Come on. Here's a shot where on the diving board, Cadman's fighting the Duke Blue Devil, and the first thing he does is he he jumps back from a swing, then he ducks underneath the swing, and then he brings an uppercut hits the blue devil. Um, so here's that data applied to the Cavalier. That's pretty much it. Then we just tell the computer to draw all the pictures uh, and render it out and we take that and in a different program we would marry it to the background, the compositing, uh, and there we can adjust the shadow opacity and other things like that. Uh, and then render out our finished movie which gets put into your standard video editing application and that's where the sound effects and that's where stuff are at. Find out why more people are choosing clean, safe, reliable propane. Visit usepropane.com. Propane, exceptional energy. Hey, this is Bart. Stay tuned for more Cavalier Sports Weekly. Welcome back to the show. My teammates and I battled Tennessee on Friday night while the men hosted Charlotte on Saturday. Let's take a look at the highlights from these early season matchups. The Olympic Sports Spotlight is presented by the Virginia Athletics Foundation. We didn't clear the ball the first time, you know, and once you let the ball bounce around in the box, it could end up in the back of your net. So, you know, we've been on the winning end of those, and uh, we know how good that feels. And uh, it's the first time in a little while we've been on the end of that. So hopefully these kind of games will make us that much stronger down the, down the road. We've got a whole lot of opportunities left. To, you know, Had we won this game, I don't think it would have made our season. And the fact that we lost it is not going to break our season. Chris Tierney played a fantastic uh, ball into the box. And Adam, Christmas time has run perfectly and, and finished. After
after we got that first goal, the game opened up a little bit. Yannick Reiner was, was getting beat up pretty, pretty good all night, and he timed his run, got a good ball on a little bit of a breakaway, took a great shot, and more importantly, followed his shot. So, so far, so good. You're right, no losses, which is uh, always a positive thing, and also no goals scored against us. I'm very pleased with our center backs in particular. To be very honest with you, I feel like that we are ahead of right now where we were this time last year. Thanks for watching Cavalier Sports Weekly. Next week, we'll have highlights from the Syracuse game. And Senator Brian Barthamus will be taking us on a special trip to visit former UVA tight end Heath Miller, now a Pittsburgh Steeler. Until next time, go Hoos. Cavalier Sports Weekly is presented by the Virginia Lottery, where all profits benefit Virginia's public schools grades K-12. through Buy clean, safe, reliable propane. Propane, exceptional energy. And brought to you in part by the Virginia Athletics Foundation, dedicated to providing scholarship, operational, and facility support for the Virginia Athletics Program.